What's up, guys? Hey, I'm glad to see that you're still with us and you haven't melted after this last week, dude. It was so hot and we made it through. It's still going to be hot for a little bit, but you guys are here. I want to welcome you if you're watching from any of our five campuses, if you're out in Brentwood, if you're out in Hayward, if you're in Walnut Creek, if you're in Livermore, or if you're in Danville, welcome. And if you don't attend any of our campuses, but you're watching us online, we are pumped that you're here as well. We're super excited for everything we have going. We have an awesome service planned for you, but I want to let you know before we jump into our service, we have something happening in a few weeks called the Aloha drive through It's actually going to be a, an event where we can see your face. You have to stay in your car, but you, we're going to see your face. It's going to be uh, something that is going to be super fun, saying goodbye to summer and hello to our school year in this next season of our lives. So Aloha drive through make sure you keep an eye out for more information and you don't miss that. I heard there's going to be like dunk tank, churros, slushy machine. It's going to be pretty awesome. So we're going to want to see you there. But for right now, we're going to hop into our service. Thank you guys so much for being with us. All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Dude, no. You gotta go like, like. Hey. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, what? What is up, students? We are excited to have you here for week three of our series called New Rhythm. Uh, and that is because, uh, well, uh, a lot of things. Griffin talked about some stuff with rhythms. Todd talked about some rhythm stuff. And I'm going to be talking to you about some rhythm stuff. Uh, the reason, I, the thing I'm going to be talking about, the reason I'm talking about new rhythms Uh, is similar, but it is that we have entered into a new rhythm of life. Todd talked about this. Griffin talked about this. Great, 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 great. I got you. I got you. I got you. But trust me, uh, this has been a really unique season for all of us. Uh, It's kind of shifted the way that we would normally do things, the way that life would normally be, uh, the way that school would normally be, the way that church would normally be. Coronavirus, COVID-19, it's changed some things for us. It's made things new and different, and it's, it's brought this new rhythm, and it's changed, changed things. But I'm here to tell you, uh, we actually know that this isn't the first time that we've entered into a new rhythm of life. It's happened before. I mean, as you're getting older, as you're growing up, uh, you go from one grade to the next. Maybe you're going from fifth grade into sixth grade, and that is kind of a new rhythm uh, maybe you're going from eighth grade into ninth grade, your first year of high school, and that's a new rhythm of life. Maybe you're a senior, you just graduated, and you still like watching our services because you love us so much. We love you too. Uh, but that's a new rhythm of life. And those new rhythms, they bring about changes. Things that are externally happening to you uh, are, are changing around you, and you have to kind of adapt to those changes. You have to adapt to that new rhythm. Uh, and with that, Uh, you kind of change a little bit yourself. There are things about you that change with these new rhythms that you're walking into. Not just with coronavirus, but with moving from grade to grade or moving from one place to the next or moving from being homeschooled to not being homeschooled or from not being homeschooled to being online schooled, you know, stuff like that. It's it's these new rhythms, and and we can change things uh, about ourselves. Some of those things can be good, and some of those things can be not so good. I think some of the good changes uh, as you enter into a new rhythm is that maybe you're more mature now. You're you're in a new grade. You're in a new school. You've got new friends, uh, and so you're more mature. Um, Maybe you're, like, more athletic or you're better at sports this year because you're growing and your body is maturing. We're not going to have that conversation now. That's super weird. Uh, Maybe you're, like, less shy. You've gained a little bit more confidence because you know what happened to you last year. You don't want to be the shy kid. You want to kind of reinvent yourself. That's, that's how these new rhythms kind of help us change ourselves is we, we want to reinvent ourselves. It gives us an opportunity to reinvent ourselves. Maybe uh, now you're more responsible. You're better at doing your chores. You clean your room without your mom asking you to. I know you don't. Uh, maybe you're better at just staying on top of your homework and getting all your tasks done and making sure that you're ahead of the game or, or at least like where you need to be. Um, maybe you're more responsible as in, like, you take care of your family. You spend more time with your family. You actually love to hang out with your family. I know we've been in lockdown, and I know 
things are different. So for some of you, you're like, that would never happen. But maybe there's some of you out there who are like, yeah, actually, I do appreciate having more time with my family. And that as this new rhythm has uh, entered into my life, that's a thing that I've changed about myself. But then there are some not so good things. Maybe these not so good changes that you've made about yourself uh, are more like you, you ignore your little brother. Or maybe you're like mean to him. As you're getting older, you're kind of realizing like, I'm not, I'm not in that level anymore. I'm kind of on this new level. And so you ignore your little brother or your little sister or whoever. You're mean to them. Uh, y- you kind of start disliking your family. And you want to spend less and less time with them. That's maybe one of the changes that you've made that's, that's not so good. Maybe you start using different language. Maybe last year you didn't use the kind of language that you use this year. And what I mean is you've started swearing. Um, I remember when I made that change, I was in like fourth grade going into fifth grade, and I had heard a swear word for the first time, and it was like daggers hitting my ears. Like, what is that? Uh, Can you say that? And then as I got older and entered into new rhythms, I was like, I can totally use these words because it's cool. And now that I said that, you're like, Jake, that's super lame. And let me tell you, that's exactly how everyone else feels about it. Uh, so maybe some of these unhealthy changes that you've made about yourself is that you're, you're entering into some unhealthy relationships. Like you're, you're dating people, and they're not really good relationships. Maybe you're, uh, you're in an unhealthy area of crossing physical boundaries that you don't need to cross. Maybe you're in high school, and you're in this place where a- as you've gotten into a new rhythm, the thing you've changed is that you're okay with doing a lot more things with the person you're dating than you were before. Maybe as you've entered into this new rhythm, some new things have have, uh, come into your life that you didn't used to do. Maybe, Maybe you've started doing drugs. Maybe you've started vaping because who cares, right? It's in, if we're in corona, what does it matter? Maybe you've started drinking because you're like, my life is so meaningless right now. It's so stiff and stagnant and stale and I need something to kind of liven it up a little bit and so you've brought these toxic poisonous things into your life and that's the change that you've made but on a on a different level since you know we're in church and all uh, maybe on the good side these changes about yourself as you've gone into this new rhythm you have started on the, on the good side of things you've started reading your bible more as you've uh, kind of entered into a new rhythm the thing you've changed is you've read your bible more You've actually had more of a desire to know God more. I said more a lot there. Uh, maybe you've, you've even been talking to God a lot more than you used to, and that's a good change. But then on the other side, the not-so-good side, some of the changes that you've made is maybe you stopped going to church altogether. And I know a lot of you out there are like, we can't go to church right now, and, and that's not true because that's what we're doing right now. And, and that's what our watch parties are all about is, is actually going to church and how Jesus and the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit can reach you even through a screen. It's crazy. I know the power of God is crazy, but maybe on the not-so-good side, you, you've kind of given up on that. You've stopped going to church. You've stopped reading your Bible. You've stopped talking to God or, or hearing from him, and, and maybe at the very worst, you've drifted away from believing in God at all. That's the change that you've brought into yourself. As you've been reinventing yourself into this new rhythm of life, you've just kind of let that go. Well, I need to tell you something. Just because your circumstances change doesn't mean your faith should change. Just because your circumstances change, it doesn't mean your faith should change. In fact, that is the one thing of all the things that, that we're going to go through in life, of all the things that are going to change around us, our faith is the one thing that we have to hold on to no matter what. We have to be firmly planted. We have to have a firm foundation in God and who he says we are and who we believe he is. We have to be grounded in that. It doesn't matter what changes. It doesn't matter if it's coronavirus or your new school year or your online school or you move to a different state or your family decides to go to New Zealand because it looks awesome there and I want to go. It doesn't matter. We have to keep our faith. And I know you're sitting there thinking like, it's so hard to believe in God sometimes. When, when, When tragic things happen in my life and God doesn't come through for me, it is so hard to believe in God. I know. I know how that feels. I know how that feels personally. I know I've had people that I've lost who I'm, I'm like questioning and wondering like, God, why did that happen? Why would you let that happen? But I still trust him. 
I still know that he has a plan that is greater than anything I could ask, greater than anything I could ask or imagine. He knows so much more, and I have to be firmly planted, firmly uh, have a firm foundation in that faith, trusting and believing that God actually knows more than me because he does. There was this guy I was thinking about as, as uh, I was writing this sermon, <sighs> talking about, like, you know, as things change around us, how, how can we keep some of those things about ourselves the same? As things change around us, how do we keep our faith in this new rhythm? And this guy I was thinking about, you ever heard of this guy, Daniel? Not, like, spelled Daniel, pronounced Daniel, but, like, his name's actually Daniel. Uh, there's a whole book about him. It's pretty sweet. Uh, so Daniel is this guy. He's actually one of the, they call him a minor prophet. And uh, Daniel has a crazy story. Daniel uh, was living in Jerusalem, and he gets captured by the king of Babylon, not like personally, you know, but by his guards and stuff, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, some people mess it up. It's Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, he gets captured. He gets brought into Babylon with his homies, and this is a new rhythm of life that he's in. And in Daniel chapter 1, we see that uh, there's some things that are already starting to change. The Babylonians, they want to change some things about these Israelites, about these uh, Jewish people from, from Jerusalem. They want to change some things. First thing they want to change is their name. You see, uh, they actually, maybe you didn't know this, but they wanted to change Daniel's name to Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar? I can't ever say it. I just feel like I would... I want to mess it up. Belteshazzar. Belteshazzar. They want to change his name. And he's like, bro, I don't want to be named Belteshazzar. So he's like, I'm going to keep my name. We're talking about what things are going to change uh, about ourselves when we enter into a new rhythm. And Daniel, as he's entering into a new rhythm, he's not even willing to change his name. He's like, I don't care what's changing around me. I'm going to keep this. This is my name. This is the name God gave me. I'm keeping it. I'm Daniel. You can't change it to Belteshazzar. So later on in Daniel chapter 1, we see kind of this first encounter. Daniel is with his homies, and uh, the king brings him into this, like, uh, process, this royal process to kind of raise up dudes who he was going to have around him who were, like, uh, wise and mature and whatever. And so they're eating at this, this dinner table, this banquet thing, and Daniel's like, yeah, I'm not going to eat this food. It's in Daniel chapter 1. There's, like, t- uh, certain types of food and meats that... Uh, if you, as an Israelite, as a man of God, you cannot eat because you made an oath to God not to do it. You're not going to defile yourself. So Daniel is like, bro, I'm not doing that. I don't care if I'm in a new place. I don't care if I'm, I'm basically a slave. I'm, I'm literally a slave in this new place. I, I was stolen and brought here by an army, and I'm not going to change who I am in my faith. My faith says I have to follow what God wants me to do, and, and part of that is I'm not going to change uh, what I eat. And they, they go through this whole testing thing, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. He, he says this. He's like, you know who I am? Because my name is Daniel from Jerusalem. My name is Daniel, not from Babylon. You know what I'm talking about? It's a little Hamilton stuff. That's what he says. Uh, and so that's kind of another thing that we see. Daniel's like, I'm not willing to change my faith. I'm not going to give up on that. Then we get to Daniel chapter 3. This is a, a really popular story. I'm sure you've heard of the story of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You heard of them? No, I, you probably haven't because their names were changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their names aren't actually Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but when they were uh, you know, stolen and brought into Babylon, they changed their names to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These dudes, they're in another situation where uh, the, the entire kingdom is being forced to bow down. There's like this flute that's going to play, and when it, when it does... They all have to bow down to this golden idol, and if you don't, you will be executed and put to death, and you'll die of being dead, something like that. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this, they hear this flute, everyone's supposed to bow down, and they're like, no, I'm not going to do that, because I'm not going to give up my faith. No matter what's happening around me, even if there is a, a government, even if there's a king, even if there's this law that says I'm going to die if I don't follow it, I don't care. I'm not going to give up my God. That's what they stood for. Then this whole thing happens where they get thrown into this furnace, and the guards who carried them in died because the furnace was so hot, and then they're like, whoa, there's a fourth guy in there. We don't remember that, and it was Jesus, and it was super cool. Uh, But they're not willing to throw away their faith. And then this last thing is that we see in Daniel chapter 6, this whole situation happens. Uh, These higher-ups that are close to the king are trying to trip Daniel up. 
And so they, they conspire, they come up with this plan, and they're like, hey, you know what? We don't really like this Daniel guy. He's, he's really stubborn. He thinks his God's better than us. So we're going to change some things about that. We're going to make it a law where you can't actually, you can't uh, pray to this God. So they make it a law, and they say, if you pray to this God, if you're caught praying to this God, uh, you will surely be punished or thrown into a lion's den or something terrible is going to happen to you. So uh, this happens, and they catch Daniel praying. Then he finds out that he's going to get in trouble or whatever. And so he's like, goes to his room. He's like, oh, my gosh. I got in trouble for praying. What do I do? I pray. I'm going to pray about this. And so he's praying to God, like, God, please don't let this law be a thing. Save me. Deliver me. Whatever. Daniel is a guy who is uh, holding on to his faith. He still stands there, and he says, I am not throwing away my God. I am not throwing away my God. That's what he says. His little Hamilton stuff right there. I, I watched that the other day. I got really pumped up about it. I am not throwing away my God. Hey, yo, there's no king of country that can take my faith from me. I am not throwing away my God. That's what he says. So this happens, and even as Daniel's chanting this, he wasn't literally, but you know what, you know what I'm saying. Uh, he gets thrown into the lion's den because he gets in trouble for that. But he still is standing there saying, like, no matter what happens to me, no matter if there's a punishment that comes from this, I'm not willing to give up my faith. I don't care what happens. I don't care what new rhythm I'm entered into, what things around me change. The thing that isn't going to change, the thing that can't change is my faith. We have to follow this example from Daniel. He says that even in a new rhythm, we cannot give away our faith. We can't just let it go. Even when our lives don't look perfect, even when it's so boring and we're so exhausted from being in our homes, we can't just say, well, God's not really doing it for me right now, so I'm going to turn to things that are really poisonous and toxic for me. I'm going to watch stuff I shouldn't watch. I'm going to maybe pick up some new drugs or vape or alcohol or whatever that I definitely shouldn't be doing. I'm going to connect with some friends that I know aren't really healthy for me or good influences because I'm bored, man, and, and God just, he's just not there. You know, I've talked to him. I've, I've been praying and doesn't really seem like he's here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce on that. I'm going to dip. Peace. Daniel says, no, it, it doesn't matter. You think Daniel had it easy? This dude was living a life for God as an Israelite, and then he gets uh, captured as a slave and brought in chains to Babylon, but he still wouldn't change his name. Uh, I was kind of getting on a flow there, but this is Daniel. His life wasn't easy. Things were always pitted against him. He always had people and governments and kings that were trying to overthrow him and get him to break from his faith. And Daniel's resolve was, no, I am not throwing away my God. I am not throwing away my God. That's what he says. This is Daniel. He proudly chants that. It's the same thing that we see with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they are in this situation where everything around them is saying, just give up your God for a second. Because if you don't, you're going to be punished. Just give up your God. Just give up your God because where is he, man? You've been a slave. Your name was changed, and now you're here, and you're going to get thrown into a furnace of flames. Yeah. They said, no, we're not going to do that. Whatever we face in this world, we have to cling tightly to our faith. Whatever changes around us, whatever new rhythm we're in, the thing that can't change is our faith. Matter of fact, actually, this, this is going to be so weird, and I don't care. I want you to say this with me right now because this is the anthem, and this is what we need to be believing in and, and the foundation that we need to be grounded in is that we're not going to throw away our God, no matter what. So if you're in your room, I know this is going to be weird. If you're in your room watching this, if you're driving, if you're at a watch party and you're around people and you're wearing a mask and you're like, this is going to be super weird. I don't care. I want you to say this with me. Ready? We're going to say, I am not throwing away my God like this. I am not throwing away my God. 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 Like that. Okay, amazing. That's great because we believe that. No matter what happens, we're not going to throw away our God. We know we trust in his hope, in his light, in his promise for our lives. And I know this year has already been hard enough, and that should be a, a clear enough sign as to why we need God, as to why we can't give up on him because we know we need him. We know that he has to be the one that carries us through this because we can't get through it on our own. We need each other. We need each other to help fight for our faith. 
You need the person next to you to help you fight for your faith. You can't do it on your own. That's why we do community groups. That's why we have watch parties. That's why when we gather uh, as a church, whether it's in a living room or in a giant building or online, we need each other to help fight for our faith because this life is hard. So what I want you to do right now, if you're at a watch party, is I want you to turn to the person on your right. When I turn right, it'll probably look like your left, but on your right, maybe it's this way for you. I want you to turn to that person and say, I am going to help you fight for your faith. Great. Now turn to the person on, the, on your left. Maybe it's this way for you. Maybe this is my left. And I want you to say, I am going to help you fight for your faith. That's probably weird, but if you can't say that, man, I don't know where we're at with Jesus. I don't know how we can say, like, I want to believe in God. Ugh, we need each other's help. This is a challenge. And if you're at home right now and you're like, whew, I didn't have to say that because I'm by myself, bro. I am by myself. No, you're not getting out of this. What I want you to do, if you're watching this by yourself, I want you to get out your phone right now. And if you're like, well, I'm watching this on my phone, videos can pause. Did you know that? I want you to text one of your friends just randomly. They're going to be super freaked out by this. They're going to be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But I want you to text one of your friends and say, I am going to help you fight for your faith. We have to do that. We need each other to get through this. And the crazy thing is, this situation with Daniel, we think that Daniel gets caught in, in Daniel chapter 6 because uh, he, he, he's praying and then he gets in trouble and he's like, oh man, so, something's bad's going to happen to me. I'm going to get thrown into a lion's den. I need to pray to God. Oh God, don't let this be. Uh, you got to change this lot. You got to help me out. But the thing is, this wasn't new for Daniel. It wasn't like he had been just kind of coasting by, and then tragedy struck, new rhythm struck, and then he was like, oh my gosh, where's God? God, are you there? No, Daniel was a guy who was praying constantly. Daniel was a guy who was praying daily, multiple times a day. It says this. He was praying multiple times a day, and it was because of his faith that he was saved. It was because of his faith that these other guys weren't super pumped about him. We have to be like Daniel. We can't just uh, hope that when tragedy strikes, if we haven't really been focused on God, that like, oh, maybe now God will be there for me. We have to believe and trust and know that God is there, and we have to seek him daily, just like Daniel did. That has to be the thing that can't change. That has to be our old rhythm. That was Daniel's old rhythm. He said, I'm entering into a new rhythm, but I'm going to keep my old rhythm. That's not going to change. Rhythm. And you know what Daniel's old rhythm was? It was this. I am not throwing away my God. I am not throwing away my God. Let's pray. Uh, Father God, thank you so much for bringing all of us here. God, we know and we trust in your hope. And if we're not fully there, God, I pray that you would spark something in our hearts. Ignite a fire that burns for you, God. God, help us to, to see you more every single day. Give us hope. Give us peace. Give us comfort, God, and help us to adapt into this new rhythm by keeping our faith and, in fact, growing our faith so that we may draw closer to you. Because no matter what happens in this world, no matter what things change around us, we are not going to throw you away. We are not going to give up our faith, and we need each other. So, God, help us to support each other as fellow believers, as fellow Christians, as a family. God, I pray that you would grow all of us closer together as a family and ultimately closer towards you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's up, guys? Welcome to this portion of this. I'm not welcome to the service. Been, I don't even know why. Here. And I always do the peace sign thing. And it's like my thing. I got to stop <laughs> doing that. It's really bad. Yeah. Peace. Peace. I've been doing this since <laughs> I was a little kid. It's like a problem. So it's so a problem. Yeah, you can go to like. <laughs> it actually like is AA though. For peace. I need like, to stop is, doing this. Peace anonymous. It's like a buffer for me. It makes me feel like I'm a part of what we're doing. I need to just put my hand down. Yeah, you do. Also, uh, thanks for showing up in your sweats and stuff. Did yeah. You, did you jog here? You know, you... bro. I actually, yeah, I jogged around <laughs> 30 miles to get here. You did. Uh, so is that, yeah. that's why you were late too. That, yeah, that's gotcha. exactly okay, why. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, um, Jake's message, man, absolutely killing it as as we're talking about this whole new rhythm and like life is so different um i want you guys to be able to discuss that to talk about it with whoever's around you at your watch party or maybe you're just with a friend at your house right now or maybe you're by yourself and you're just going to be able to journal these or think about them on your own but the first question um that we just it's a pressing question from his message i'm going to ask you and then they're going to discuss this have you seen hamilton have you seen hamilton <sighs> 
No, I have not, unfortunately. Wow. Which I feel so culturally I fully like irrelevant. You to be all I know, about it. I really do. <laughs> like I've I've heard a lot of the songs and I love the music, but I haven't seen it yet. Wow. I really want to see it. Wow. But. Okay, so answer that with the people around you right now. Have you seen Hamilton? Yes or no? And then give a case as to why you have and why everyone should, or why you haven't and why you're never going to, right? Or or either way. Just make a case for your answer, yes or no. Ready? Pause this video. Pause. How many people do you think actually paused right there? Probably half of them. Half? And we're back. We're back. Hey. I love these. I know. Great. Hey, great <laughs> discussions, man. Some of you guys were so just good. adamant about Hamilton yeah. right there. I love how passionate some people are <laughs> about not doing something. Right. But I, I will never watch Hamilton. I know. You're why? Not, you're not that I'm way, not that though. person. Yeah. I'm open. I'm open. Yeah. Well, it's on like roughly seven to ten times a week at my house. So yeah, because it's on Netflix now, yeah, right? They just love Shout it. Shout out Netflix. Know. Netflix or Disney Plus. I don't know yeah. whichever one it's on. It's on one of them. It's on my TV. That's yeah. That's all I know. Yeah. Yeah. So. So. Next question. Are you ready? I'm Do you ready. feel this? I'm Are ready. you excited? Are I'm you excited. anticipating something great? Anticipating. Uh, this is, I love this part of the story of Daniel that Jake talked about. When the king, King Darius, King D for short, I like to call him sends out this decree about anyone who worships a God other than him, basically. And, and Daniel responds in prayer. He goes back to the place that he had always been to every single day of his life, mm-hmm. no matter what the circumstance, whether his life was on the line or it wasn't. He goes back to prayer. He goes back to God. So the question is this, is what have you been running to? What have you been running to when things are really difficult? And maybe there's a p- person or a place or thing in your life that you've been dealing with that maybe it's time to start running in a different direction and running to your faith instead of the things that have been pulling you away from it. So, pause. And welcome back. I lo- I just said it too quick after your pause. But and welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> I feel like a newscaster that. there. Yeah. That's good. We have the turn around the chair yeah. and welcome back. Tonight is the 5 o'clock or, news. Or we could just be like, oh, hey, didn't see you there. Oh, well, yeah. uh. You know, that's we a good could just too. be chatting and then, f- and oh, hey. That's good. Hi. Well, anyway, I hope you guys had a good discussion about that. Um, the last question I want you guys to discuss with the people around you or really just dig in on your own is that idea that Jake was talking about where they said, Daniel, you're going to have to change your name. A- and this is one of the things that the enemy does a lot to us is the enemy wants to get in and wants to change our name because what God says about you is that you are a child of God, that you are loved by God, that you are cared about by God. But the enemy wants us to doubt that and wants us to change our name with the way that we call ourselves, with the way that we view ourselves, or with the way that we allow other people to call us as well. So this is kind of a deep question, but what I want you to discuss is what is it that you have been labeling yourself or that you have been calling yourself other than what God has already called you? What is it that the enemy is trying to get you to change your name to or that you've seen that happen in your life and then follow that up with, How can you reinforce what God has called you? How can you reinforce your actual name, which is a child of God, which is loved by God, which is somebody who God was willing to send his son Jesus to die for? How do you reinforce that on your name, on your life, and on who you are? Boom. Go ahead and discuss that. Um, And we're going to wrap up. And then short pause. (laughs) Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Um, we just believe that you're probably having the best discussion right now with your group. And I think it's so important that we're talking about this issue. Is there are so many different things that you can take on in your life based off of what someone says about you or what you've believed about yourself. Maybe someone in your life has put a label or a name on you or even the enemy himself put a name on you mm-hmm. that isn't true. And so our hope for you guys is that you would believe what God believes about you that he sees you and he's proud of you, he loves you, he sees you through the eyes of Jesus, that you're covered by um, his blood and and his grace. And so we love you guys so much and we hope that you guys come back next week. Yeah, come back next week. And also we want to let you know we are having a actual in-person thing. Some of you are freaking out, um, but it's, it's a drive through It's event. happening. It's happening. It's a drive through event. It is our Aloha drive through Aloha is like, it means hello and goodbye. So it's like, hello, new rhythm, new school year, and hello. goodbye summer. Um, and so we're going to be doing that. It's going to be awesome. I heard that there's going to be like a dunk tank there. 
And that's, I heard hey, that's you the could rumor be on the sitting s- in the dunk tank. We'll see. Yeah. You know, I'm praying about it. I heard there could be slushies. I'm thinking too. about it. Oh, slushies, there's whoo, for, free churros. That's the only reason why I'm showing up. I know it's gonna be awesome. So you guys want to make sure you are at our Aloha drive through. It is happening. It is coming up. Make sure you keep your eye out for information on that. Bug your parents and be like, yo, when is this happening? Because they're going to know because they're going to check their emails and you're going to be looking at our social media and it's going to be awesome. But we can't wait to see you guys there. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, let's just I'm not going to do I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to. OK, Peace. we'll do the B sign. See you. Peace.